Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking about camera settings for real estate photography, so let's get right into it. So when it comes to real estate photography, there are just some camera settings that we should be around when shooting. The first thing that I think we should talk about is aperture. In aperture, we have a specific range that we wanna be around. That could typically be around f7, f8, to around f11, f12. The reason why we want that is because we don't want to get too low in apertures, meaning higher apertures, because we don't want to have any bokehs or any blurriness when we're having an image. We obviously, in real estate photography, want to be able to capture as much of the image as possible and be able to see everything. You could go up to like f16, f22, but it's going to be a very small aperture and it's going to be very dark, so you might have to compensate with other settings. So just to make it easier, you can stick within the f7 to f12 range. You know, it's not very precise. You can fall a little bit out of it, but it's totally up to you just to give you a general guideline of where that's going to be. So for ISO, I like to keep it at around 100 for exterior. And for interior, I like to keep it at around 100 to 400. If we go outside of 400, like let's say 600, 800, we start to get a lot of graininess. And if we do shoot at that range, we would then have to fix it up in, po in post-production. But if you try to fix it up in Photoshop, you might start to lose some detail in the image. That's just a little tip for later. Then we can focus on shutter speed, which I think should always be adjusted after we adjust for aperture and ISO. Reason being is because for aperture, there's a specific range we wanna be in. For ISO, there's a specific range we wanna be in. But for shutter speed, there's no specific range we need to be in. And the reason for that is because we, we plop our camera on a, on a tripod and we have no moving subjects, so our subject is very still. Um, we don't ever have to worry about, you know, what type of shutter speed we're shooting for. We can put it as low as 30 seconds, or we can even do it one over 8,000. It really doesn't matter. Unless we come to flash. If you have, if you are gonna be using flash, which most of us will probably be using, there's a flash sync on your camera that you cannot exceed, because if you do, then you're starting to see black bars. For my camera, it's one over 180th. Your camera might be one over 320 or 280, it just depends. So just go ahead and search up the flash sync for your camera and you'll be able to see what shutter speed you cannot pass when you're using flash photography. So I always believe or I always think that it's great to adjust your shutter speed after, especially when you're trying to expose. So once you've set your aperture, once you set your ISO, then you can adjust your shutter speed based on the exposure that you're going for. So for example, if we have multiple exposures, I will go ahead and adjust the shutter speed till it's underexposed. Then I'll adjust the shutter speed up so that it would be properly exposed. And then I'll adjust the shutter speed up again to get overexposed. And so notice how I'm only adjusting the shutter speed to get the type of exposure I want because we don't wanna be messing our aperture or ISO for that, for that reason. The next thing that we can talk about is image quality, which I always, always, always set it at raw. We never set it for JPEG or anything else. And the reason for that is because raw gives us all the data that we need, all, all that information that we use for that camera, we then use it up in Photoshop or Lightroom and it allows us to give us a lot of control and flexibility with it. JPEG doesn't give us that type of control and doesn't give us all that information that we need. Hence, that's why we don't have that much control when we're using it in post-production. So always shoot at raw. The last thing that I have is white balance. I normally set my white balance to auto and I sometimes also set it to custom so I can manually adjust it. It's totally up to you whether you're comfortable or not to do that. If not, you can easily set it to auto and then you can maybe make any tweaks or adjustments in post-production like you can. But if you, have, if you have a little bit more experience and you are more comfortable with it, you can go ahead and set it to manual and actually really get the true white balance for that room or for that shot. So I hope you guys enjoyed those five or six camera settings that I normally um, adjust anytime I'm at a shoot. Um, these are just general guidelines. You can fall a little bit in within or a little bit out of it. You can even test them to your own, your own ways, but those should just be a little guideline that they should be able to give you an idea of where to be. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or any video ideas, please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe if you already haven't because I would be releasing a new video every single weekend for you guys. And, and I also have a website called Aperture University where you can see more content. I also have some free downloadables that you guys can check out there. The link will be in the description. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.